from social media interactions with popular health and fitness magazines to the classes I teach uh, and the clients I uh, train over the years, I have routinely been following the single question each and every time. What is the best exercise I should be doing? Uh, whether this question is asked in context to a particular goal or a specific body part, my answer is always the same. There is no such thing as the best exercise. Clearly this bold statement uh, doesn't lend itself well to catchy clickable articles that uh, you see on YouTube and uh, your Bible so called the YouTube. Well uh, the only exercise you need to do or the best exercise for abs which you see on YouTube is only you know the crunches or whatever you see the shit on YouTube I don't know uh, that much but as the health and fitness professionals it's essential that we help our clients participants and the public at large understand the truths uh, about exercise that are rooted in a uh, factual and practical science based information as opposed to the extremes and the absolutes so when it comes to exercise and uh, most things in life it's not quite black and white as a fitness educator uh, it is rare that I use the words like always or never especially with regards to exercise as there are many variables that influence exercise selection and uh, programming to help us as an industry and in turn to help our clients, participants in the public, I think we should shift away from all or nothing mentality. So when it comes to fitness, uh, here are three important factors what I think you should keep in your mind uh, that shed some light on why there is no such thing as the best exercise. The first important factor is the enjoyment factor. From a behavioral perspective, it's important that movement in whatever form it is explored be enjoyable. The most people, uh, the more people enjoy the exercise experience, the more likely they are, you know, uh, make physical activity an integral component of their lives, which ultimately, uh, you know, uh, what has the greatest impact on their health and well-being. As such, I would argue that one of the most important yet sometimes overlooked uh, aspects that we as health and fitness professionals must consider when exploring exercise options is to choose uh, forms of movement that resonate with the individuals uh, we serve and uh, that truly support their overall enjoyment and success in exercise experience. The second uh, thing is the unique needs of a particular individual. In addition to enjoyment, we must also ensure that the exercise and movements we incorporate into our classes and training sessions are both safe and effective for our clients and the participants. As such, we as a health and professionals must also have a thorough understanding of the body and how it, it is designed to move. From fundamental uh, aspects of you know joint stability and mobility, and an understanding of the interconnectedness of the body as a kinetic chain, to the primary movement patterns we explore both inside and outside of the gym, and the ways in which we add load and variability to the movements using an uh, assortment of tools and techniques to improve the health, you know, and uh, skill-related components of fitness. While exploration. Uh, through in-depth areas of study such as anatomy, physiology and kinesiology gives us a greater understanding of the complexity of a human body along with the key training principles and the general best practices it also enables us to recognize that there is no one size fits all approach so I say this thing to my clients over and over again so when it comes to exercise selection and programming there is no one uh, thing as one size fits all Although we uh, as humans may be of a similar structural design, we have a unique consideration factors that affect our physical uh, abilities. Um, these in turn influence the selection, sequencing and progression of exercise that ultimately we safely and effectively best serve our clients. This may include but is certainly not limited to postural deviations which we see uh, in people's body because of the functional demand, physical demand, muscular imbalances, uh, limited joint range of motion, chronic conditions, injuries, uh, maybe it can be acute or uh, chronic 
and varying degrees of experience with exercise as such we um, can see why it is uh, it would be uh, problematic to assume that there is one best exercise to fit everyone oh god that's so nice to hear right so best exercise across the board for individuals it's not it's not the right statement i mean at least uh, what i think so whether uh, whether there are so many variables that must be thoroughly taken into consideration with an understanding that each person has unique needs and goals for his or her exercise experience it is our role as a as a fitness educator or a fitness coach uh, or responsibly rather uh, you know as a health and fitness professional to appropriately select and tailor movements accordingly so this requires an understanding of program design progression principles as well as knowledge of variables that can be manipulated like base of support lever length points of contact positioning of the body against the gravity etc there are like zillion things i can talk right now the video will never end so it to meet the individuals where they are presently and help them move toward their uh, personal professional goals and you know improve health and fitness uh, in a safe smart and uh, successful way uh, the third point is the context of research studies which we um, you know read out and definitely not google and definitely not youtube or bodybuilding.com sorry guys i have to take these names but i don't want to blame you or you know um, pinpoint on that but there that's where uh, the population is going to so speaking about the third point about research studies while staying up to date on current research it is just an important that we properly evaluate and understand the context of uh, findings presented especially as uh, that information influences our exercise selection and uh, program class design for our clients and participants too often we uh, point uh, to the conclusion of a research study as the basis of for justifying our decision to always include a certain exercise in a, um, all the classes we teach or training sessions we lead for example over the years acsm acsm has uh, commissioned a number of independent third party research studies that we have exam examined an effectiveness of common ex exercise for various uh, areas of the body and muscle group for example biceps delt triceps glutes mm, specifically these studies have uh, used electromyography emg to test and analyze the level of muscle activation happening during an exercise which is um, which is examined uh, as such the findings of the studies indicate which exercises elicited the most muscle activation however the exercise with the highest level of muscle activation is not by default necessarily the best ones to choose uh, rather this is you know simply one lens through which to evaluate an exercise in fact care must be taken to ensure it is not only the lens through which we are evaluating the exercises and making recommendations recommendations to our clients as discussed earlier we must keep in our mind understanding of the human body and the human movement as well as the unique needs goals interests and limitations uh, of the individual we serve to effectively evaluate the pros and cons of the movement itself and ultimately determine how the findings of the research apply to our unique clients and participants so for example body weight dips i'm just giving you a, just like example which came in my mind right now may be an effective exercise for eliciting muscle activity in the triceps i'm not talking about the particular head of the triceps i'm just talking about the group so but for a client which is with instability in the scapular thoracic joint region the potential for injury might out to weigh the potential pros and cons of a particular exercise conversely the traditional push up may not elicit as much muscle activity in the pectoralis major or the pec major as the bench press but given the functional nature of the exercise its ability to work multiple areas of the body together is an in an integrated uh, and time efficient manner and then accessibility and scalability of the movement it might be preferred choice to incorporate in a 30 group fitness class where the objective is to create an inclusive uh, experience uh, that uh, you know helps individuals improve their health and fitness and overall function of the body so while there are many great exercises and movements out there and also some of are not that great ones and certainly ones that may be more effective than others at the end of the day there is no single best exercise that is perfect for everyone guys in the same exact form the more we can leverage our knowledge and expertise to effectively view exercise in other aspects of uh, 
health and fitness on an extensive spectrum the more effectively we can educate them and empower our clients participants and the public including the pop popular social media to do the same that's my uh, take on one size does not fit everyone or one exercise does not fit everyone is or it's not effective for everyone